Hey Crypt Keepers, thank you for tuning into Amy's Crypt. Today we are going to be exploring some of the scariest and most haunted ghost towns in the world. We're going to be visiting abandoned towns from Australia, Chile, Mexico and the USA. So I hope that you guys are ready for things to get really, really spooky. Our first haunted ghost town brings us to Humberstone, Chile. This decayed town dates back to 1872 and was once a thriving saltpeter mining community, home to around 3,000 people. Mining dried up after a synthetic alternative to saltpeter was developed in the 1930s, leading to the demise of Humberstone. Since this ghost town's abandonment, it has managed to develop many ghostly legends, and many people in the surrounding areas refuse to visit it out of fear of ghosts. There have been many reports of spirits within the former town, to the extent that Humberstone is commonly considered to be one of the most haunted places in Chile. These sightings are typically described as being large black shadow mists or even full-bodied apparitions. One of the creepiest buildings, as well as the most active within this ghost town, is its old schoolhouse. Many people have encountered the cheeky spirits of children in this building. They have been seen in the hallways, and it is common to capture a glimpse of them peering around the corners, spying on visitors. Adding to all this is the unexplainable sounds of children giggling and playing around the school when no one is near. Another area of interest to lovers of the paranormal is the former theatre, where a large shadow mass tends to move quickly through the building. Farina is an abandoned former mining community in an extremely remote part of South Australia. The township dates back to 1878 when it was founded by farmers who were soon to learn that the harsh conditions of the Australian outback were not the best environment for crops. After attempts at mining were unsuccessful and the main rail lines that passed through town were cut off from service, Farina and its buildings were left abandoned. Today, the ghost town of Farina simply consists of stone ruins, though they are maintained and in the process of being restored. The sites of a former church, brothel, breweries, police station and hospital all still remain, in addition to a very eerie cemetery. This leaves plenty of room for ghosts to dwell, and considering the harsh nature of life and death in the outback, there were plenty of deaths within Farina that could have resulted in spiritual activity. Countless rumours exist that the ruins come alive after nightfall with ghosts, although there are no specific or substantial stories of hauntings. During my own paranormal investigation of Farina, we received some interesting responses. These included a very compelling spirit box response within the former police station. A voice appeared to say, the big house, over a spirit box after being asked what that particular building was used for. What was this room that I'm standing in? What was this used for? We also picked up on some unsettling activity in the cemetery where Jared, my husband and camera guy, felt as though something invisible tugged on his jacket. I honestly felt like when it happened it was like a goat chewing on my sleeve or something. <laughs> <laughs> There's no goat there though. Goat ghost. There's no goats here, no. No. If the camera jolts when it happens. I was over here like filming you from about 30 meters 30 meters away. Yeah. And then I felt like something tugged here like what? Back. And I was just like, F I'm getting out of here. <laughs> really? Just outside of Merida in Mexico lies the ghost town of Miss Nibalam. Once a thriving farming community, this former town now boasts a very sinister reputation. The main rumour detailing the reason for Miss Nibalam's abandonment is that ghosts drove the living away. Whether this is true or not, some very disturbing stories have come out of this scary ghost town. The most widely told and tragic story details the death of a young boy, Julian Sito, who was just nine years of age. It is said that this innocent young boy was raped by one of the other villagers. Distraught over this event, Julian Sito is sadly said to have taken his own life, hanging himself within the former town from a tree. Now lost and confused, the spirit of this young boy is said to be trapped within the ghost town. He is one of the most frequently sighted and spoken of ghosts at Miss Nibalam, and he certainly holds the darkest backstory. Another ghost story commonly told about this abandoned town relates to a man named Don Marquez. 
Don was the former landowner of Miss Nibalam and died in an untimely way in 1921. The story goes that as Don was driving back into town one day, another vehicle intercepted his and he was assassinated right in front of his passengers, one of whom was Don's own son. Ever since, Don's spirit is said to have remained within the now abandoned house. Other spirits also reside here, including that of a priest who is generally sighted atop his former church in a flowing black robe. Plenty of other activity is also reported, with disembodied voices being common and people sighting lights turned on at night within decrepit old houses that no longer even contain electricity. Now we move on to one of California's best known ghost towns, Bodie. Resting in the wilderness, hugging Nevada's border, Bodie remains an interesting piece of history, empty but not forgotten. Bodie was founded in 1876 after gold was struck nearby. It became a popular spot for prospectors and grew to hold over 7,000 people. A steady decline in work saw miners drawn out of town to more prosperous sites and by 1915, Bodie had reached ghost town status. Many supernatural stories exist about Bodie, the most popular, however, being a curse it possesses. It is said that if an individual removes any part of Bodie, whether it be as obsolete as a nail or a rock, they will be plagued with bad luck until that item is returned to town. These claims are backed up by countless letters sent to Bodie from past visitors detailing bad luck stemming from taking a piece of the town. They are always accompanied with the item that was removed in the hope of sending the bad luck back. Plenty of other eerie stories about Bodie exists. One of the properties there is plagued by poltergeist activity from a lady spirit who dislikes other women. Elderly spirits have also been spotted knitting within their former homes, while one house is also said to contain a number of child spirits. Even the mines are thought to be haunted as unexplainable voices and sometimes screaming has been heard coming from them. Some have even claimed to sight a white mule ghost around the mines thought to have broken its back during working days. Perhaps the most tragic and best known story relates to young Evelyn Myers. This unfortunate child died in Bodie after a freak accident saw her struck in the head by a pickaxe. Plenty of people, especially children though, have sighted Evelyn's ghost around her tombstone in Bodie's cemetery. The final spot on this list is reserved for the most disturbing ghost town I have found anywhere in the world, Lenoria in Chile. This ghost town resides in the most remote reaches of the Atacama Desert, known for being the driest place on earth, extremely inhospitable and difficult to access. Lenoria was set up as a saltpeter mining community in 1826. Although the town initially prospered, mining saw tougher times and the town was to be eventually abandoned completely. Living conditions within Lenoria were extremely harsh and death became the reality for many of the town's occupants and their families. The sheer amount of deaths in Lenoria no doubt contributed to the ghostly reputation it holds today, as well as ensured its hillside cemetery was well filled. It is this cemetery where the most interesting ghost story centers. It is said that every night, those buried within the cemetery rise from their graves and walk into the nearby town of Lenoria. There's even some people who claim to have cited this happening. This legend stems from the people buried there being angry and disgruntled that their graves have been disturbed. Just by looking through the cemetery, you can see the exposed coffins and skeletal remains. Some say that it is grave robbers who contributed to this exposure, yet it could also have largely been due to the dry desert rejecting these burials. In addition to this scary zombie ghost phenomena, there have been plenty to cite apparitions around town, hear footsteps, screams, and voices too. Now guys, I've got to admit to you that Lenoria was one of the truly the most scary places that I personally have ever been. I cannot stress to you how dangerous it was for us to go out and find this ghost town. It is in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere. It is so remote. It's not even accessible by road anymore. So you actually have to go out and hike through the desert to get there. So we're pretty sure that we made it. We can see some sort of ruins out in the distance here. It is a bit of a trek and we're going to have to leave the car here. There's no way that we can drive, um, but hopefully we've located Lenoria. And that hike is made even more treacherous because there's been a lot of mining in the past and still currently in the area. So there's just all these open mine shafts and massive holes 
everywhere in the floor. So you can imagine what it was like for us trekking, I think it was about two to three hours or something from the ghost town back to our car in the dead of night with all holes everywhere. I actually thought that I was going to die. We're walking down this random track that we found. There's just holes, big ass holes everywhere. They're sort of deep, not heaps deep. That one sounds deeper. So I'm now walking back in the pitch black. This is literally what I can see. Just a tiny little glimpse of torchlight. Uh, car's pretty far away, so hopefully we can make it there. But this place remains one of my favorite ever that I've ever visited. And I would love to go back to Chile and visit Lenoria again. Now, I also wanna let you guys know that I also have full videos on all of these locations that can be found on my channel. Just beware though that a lot of these were filmed in the very, very early days of Amy's Crypt. And I do not have a background in video editing or filmmaking or anything like that. This has been a massive learning curve for me. So my videos back then might look a little bit different to what they do now. They might be a little bit more crap. <laughs> but I still hope that you can go back and check them out and enjoy them because they are amazing places and they have amazing stories connected to them. I am also interested to know what were your favourite stories? What were your favourite ghost towns on this list? Do you know of any scary, especially haunted ghost towns out there? That you think that I should visit and maybe when it is safe and you know we're more able to travel I, I can go and visit these ghost towns I would be so excited to know any recommendations that you guys have for me now if you did enjoy this video though please remember to like comment share and subscribe that'll really helps me out if you want to do any more reading on any of the ghost towns that I've spoken to today then head to my website amyscrypt.com you guys can also keep up with me and what I'm doing on Facebook Twitter and Instagram I also post a bunch of bonus content and and exclusive things over on my patron and uh, my YouTube memberships you can find me at Amy's Crypt. Thank you for watching Crypt Keepers until next time.